What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna be doing a overview of Project Canada's Ultimate Arcade. Wait till you see this one. <laughs> All right, guys, you know the drill. If you're not following me on Instagram, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. I'm also now on TikTok. So there's a bunch of videos there and comments and likes and hearts and social media is social media. So I'm taking advantage of every platform. Again, if you were following me, you would have seen this build day by day. I mean, on my Instagram stories, I post a lot. That's where a lot of the videos go to. Uh, if you were following it, you would have seen basically ground up of this down from me wiring, down from me doing the custom button inserts, down to playing and testing. Take advantage of social media. Again, Vic underscore VP. If you are not following me, what are you waiting for? I'm taking advantage also of the YouTube stories and again, TikTok. So if you do want some quick videos and action, be sure to follow all the socials. But enough of that. On this one today, we're gonna to be talking about an overview. I'm gonna to try to keep this video short. This video is gonna go out to potential customers and it's just, we're gonna talk overview. I'm not gonna go in depth. I don't wanna to ramble too much. I will make a whole separate video for this specific build. This one today, we're gonna to be just doing an overview. What's in this, what's happening in it, all of the add-ons that he has, and all that for Project Canada. Um, I do have a lot of videos lined up. I'm gonna be looking at and doing a uh, buyer's guide to a PC hyperspin build. I've been kind of delaying that, so I gotta do that. Uh, I'm going to go into light guns, trying to compare the Jolt light guns from RPEG Electronics to my aim tracks. Um, going to be talking about like LED blinky, active marquee, again, all that in a separate video, so stay tuned. You will see me wearing the same shirt because I'm banging all these videos out today because I got to get this thing on a pallet and shipped out to Canada. All right, so like I said, this is going to be an overview of the cabinet, so let's start with the basics. What is this? You're looking at the Bivik 55-inch four-player ultimate arcade. This right now is running a PC hyperspin based system, 40 terabytes. That's why I dubbed it the ultimate arcade. This computer right now has virtually every system, the main systems, no BS, no filler systems in this. From Super Nintendo, the arcade, the NES, the Game Boys, the Switch, the 360, the Wii, the Wii U, PC game, Steam, Fightcade. GameCube, PS2, PS3, PS1, PSP. Yes, if you take a look at my other videos, you will see, look at basically the ultimate console, you will see the hyperspin build. 40 terabytes. That is a beast of a PC. If you know your terabytes and all that, this is loaded. Again, my hyperspin systems are focused on the main system's main bangers. So that's system wise. Again, running hyperspin 40 terabytes worth of games. Now let's talk about the add ons and the control panel and the little details and such. You're know, looking at a four player deck. This customer did have a very specific, unique control panel layout. You could let me know when you want. I built these custom made to order. I have a CNC machine. I will cut any button layout you want. So we do have the four player deck with the trackball on this build. As far as audio on this, Project Canada went very unique. I normally use a different audio setup. On this one, he does have two 8-inch PC music-grade monitors alongside a Bluetooth USB amp-style system as far as the volume and such. Again, we'll talk about that in the other video. And you can't forget the big eye catcher on this. This is running a 25-inch widescreen active marquee. Whatever happens with the game, whatever happens with the system, as you can see, the active marquee goes with it. This is honestly, when I first made this cabinet, was the biggest question. Hey Vic, can you put an active marquee? I said, yes I can, I just gotta wait for a customer that wants it, and boom, there you go. This, like I said in my past videos, this is where the marquee is. You can take a look at my Godfather Scarface build. I have a static image. This one, has a 25 inch wide screen display, again, active marquee. So while you're playing a game, whatever game you're into, it will load up the real image and such. Again, active marquee on this. As far as other little details, for example, in the front here, I do have two USB ports here, usually for Guitar Hero guitars or the light guns in this situation. 
I also have for this customer as far as custom made, he did want two more USB connectors up here along the control panel. So we have four USB connections here. Later on in the video, I'm gonna go in depth here because I do have also two um, wall mounted female power connectors for the Jolt light guns on this. As you can see, the cabinet does have LEDs all around, so it's the underglow alongside of the control panel here. Again, I'm gonna be going in depth as far as this specific customer's LED setup, but normally I do always have LEDs, whether you want um, addressable LEDs or regular static LEDs. Talking about the control panel real quick, this customer had, again, very specific stuff. This is running servos. We have two servos on player one and player two. Servo sticks basically instead of having a dedicated four-way for games such as Pac-Man and Qbert, he actually has two joysticks set up where basically there's a motor inside that will swap the gate from eight-way to four-way. Very cool, very unique. It is a kind of process to get it to work. But yes, he does have servos on this. Also on this build, he is running LED Blinky, games in MAME arcade, so your arcade games. Basically, when you launch it, LED Blinky will show you and dictate and say what each button does. So for example, if I run Centipede, it's gonna only illuminate the trackball and the button ones for fire. Very cool stuff as far as LED Blinky. It is a big add-on, it's a very tedious task. I was able to do it, but again, in another video, we're gonna talk in depth about LED Blinky. Since we're on the subject with controllers, I'm going to show you what I normally include in these builds and I'm going to talk about the add-on that was added to this build specifically. Normally, I always include four Xbox One controllers. Again, I can't stress enough, I always use Xbox One controllers. A uh, customer had a very unique and special request as far as color scheme wise. So we have two red controllers and two black controllers. Again, I always include four wireless Xbox One. These are Xbox One, these are the current gens, not Xbox 360, Xbox One controllers. As far as this customer though, he went a little bit extra. We have six eight biddle controllers, wireless eight biddle. We have two NES Turbo graphic style controllers. We have two Super Nintendo style controllers. As you can see again, eight biddle wireless. And we have two Sega Genesis style controllers. Again, all out. You're looking at six wireless, eight biddle controllers and four Xbox One controllers. And as you can see, very cool with this build, I'm pulling it out from the back of the cabin. I made a shelf in the rear. This way, as far as storage, you can basically put it right up here. No need to put boxes and stuff. It is up here. Let's keep rocking with controllers, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this does also have two Jolt Gun for IR light guns on this. Can't forget about the light guns. Now, you would think I was done. No, I'm not done. He also does have two Guitar Hero guitars. He also does have the DJ Hero controller. And he also has two Dance Dance Revolution dance pads. Now, in all brutal honesty, again, this is going to Canada. We basically figured out that on his side, he basically ordered the guitars, the DJ Hero, and the DDR pads, and they are right now at his home. No need for them to be shipped to me because those are connected via RafNet. Very simple stuff, and I could also team viewer in and adjust connection. So this is my personal from the House of Rock cabinet as I did my testing. All works, RafNet and all, and when he gets it, he'll just plug in his controls. But as far as add-ons, controller options and all that, this is by far the most I've ever done. <laughs> it is, again, it is the ultimate arcade. So real quick, we'll talk about artwork on this. Very unique setup. Again, I always do all the artwork. I'll print them, whatever you want. You want glossy, you want matte laminated. I'll do all the printing and I usually do all the artwork. On this one specifically, the customer actually supplied the artwork, meaning he sent me actual Adobe Illustrator files, I put them into Photoshop and then I printed it. So customer specifically on this build, he made the artwork, I printed it and applied it. And also very unique specific to this build, he did request rear vinyl on the rear panel. Normally I do not do this, this was an add-on because 
Normally, arcade cabinets, they are pushed against the wall. His specific scenario, I believe he said that this is actually in the middle of the room. So he needed it to look good all around 360. You can see the three PC fans here. And yes, this right here is a door panel. This panel comes off. It looks great because when I do apply the vinyl, it is one solid piece and then razor blade out. Right now, I don't have all four screws into the door, but when I do, it would be pushed in more. Again, this panel right here is removable in case he has to go in and you know mess around with the PC side of it. Yes, this panel is removable. And now, like I said, for this specific unique build, I did add a little shelf, very well hidden. And as you can see, you can basically stack your controllers and it sticks out. I did that on purpose so it doesn't just sink in. It's a very nice shelf. It's about maybe three inches deep. And all the controllers that I pulled out, they do fit on here. So very nice stuff. Uh, I thought of it on the fly last minute because I was like, whoa, we have a lot of controllers on this. And, you know, I don't really want him to be opening and closing the panel, the door panel. So I said, hey, you know what? Everything usually here is empty. Why not make a little shelf for it? So as you can see, you do have the controller storage right above. Honestly, that's your quick overview. I'm gonna do a little bit of gameplay, kind of talk about the LED blinky, and I'll do like the jolt guns real quick in this video, but again, stay tuned for another video. I have a lot of videos lined up. And yes, that is all the controllers in this build. Man, uh, I, you know, I'd be lying to you if I told you that it was easy. This one really pushed the limits, really tested me. Um, I can't wait to go in depth on it so that you know you could really fully understand the magnitude of this system. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna talk about that in another video. I'm gonna take the boxes down because I just took a couple of pictures. I'm gonna take the boxes down. We're gonna launch into some main arcade games to show off LED blinky and the servo sticks. Uh, and then I'll honestly do the Jolt light guns and I'll probably do one or two of the 8 bit old controllers just so you could just see it. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, Project Canada 55 inch. By Vic four player arcade cabinet. It is the ultimate arcade. All right, so we'll do some gameplay real quick. I kind of want to show off LED blinky and the servos in this part. Um, and also, we're going to go into night mode. So, I'm going to turn off the lights. So, excuse me. Turn off the garage lights. Okay. And again, it's pretty cool. So, I, wanna just, I just want to show off LED blinky. You can definitely see now the illumination and all that. So, we're going to launch Metal Slug. I'm going to pump the volume. Metal Slug. Slug. Loading complete. Super vehicle zero zero one. Shoot. Jump. Grenade. Start game. Insert point. Primary control. Eight way joystick. So I purposely put the volume up so you could actually hear that the commentator, the person, actually verbally tells you what each button does. Very cool. Alongside of blinking on each button. And now, as you can see, this is a two-player game. Only our two-player deck is illuminated and only the three buttons that are used are active. Now, some real retro heads might say, hey, Vic, Metal Slug is a Neo Geo game. Neo Geo uses four buttons. Yes, Neo Geo is a four-button layout, but Metal Slug only uses three. So as you can see, LED Blinky is programmed just to kind of know what's happening. You could remove the audio. So as you can see, like game audio was going while the announcer is speaking. And honestly, as you can see, there's a lot that he says. Uh, imagine loading Street Fighter with a six button layout because he'll say light punch, roundhouse kick. He'll go through all six. You could remove that option. If you're not a fan of it, you could remove it. But for the customer, I'll give it to him now like that. And it's a very simple toggle switch inside of settings. Also, you can see this customer specifically wanted bezels on this build. He didn't want full screen, he wanted bezels. The bezels honestly look great. Um, me personally, I do like them full screen, but honestly, seeing how the bezels are, it's, it looks good, honestly. And, and like I said, I'm able to now play. We can do two player, we can do one player, and it's awesome. It looks great. Again, 55 inch screen. I'm not up against the glass like other competitors and such. This right now, I'm a good 36 inches away from the screen. It looks great. It looks awesome. Perfect. I'm going to exit out. It'll bring us back into hyperspin. The joystick servos will swap. I'm going to go back. I'm going to launch a trackball game, which is a great game that I love, which is Centipede. So let's bang it out real quick. And as you can see, active marquee is going and such. Long press to enter in. 
just to show you on LED Blinky for Centipede. As you can see, fire. Search point. Primary control. Trackball. Awesome. LED Blinky is awesome when it works. Stay tuned for the full details on my full review on LED Blinky. But as you can see, it works. Me, personally, I go in depth. I mean, I'm the type, because I play games, I go in depth. You're seeing right now player one and player two with a fire. Hey Vic, is that an issue? No. I actually have that purposely set up for Centipede because you might be a right hand player or you might be a left hand player. That's just how I think of things. So as you can see, I'm able to play with my left hand or I'm able to play with my right hand. I have that set up specifically exactly for this game, even Millipede and such. It's awesome. Trackball, beautiful trackball. I can't get enough of it. He did get an RGB trackball, but he only wanted the red color for the theming. And as you can see, it just it looks awesome. It looks great. Boom. So now real quick, it's gonna be hard to visually see it unless I, I'll lift the deck too. I could do that too. But um, I do wanna show you if you could hear the servo actually activate. So right now we're gonna launch Street Fighter. It's gonna go through the button presses and you'll see the buttons kind of flash as it goes. And I right now have the volume off because I do want you to actually hear the motor switch. There's two motors here that switch. I'm gonna not talk. There it is. That is the motor switch right there. So again, now the joystick is set to eight way. Once you exit the game, it goes to four way, depending on what game you launch and what system you launch the servos will activate. Very cool situation. So now just to show you real quick, again, the control panel is on a piano hinge. I'm restarting the game. I'm pretty sure I have the camera lined up good. So you could actually physically see the motors spin. Again, two servo motors on this. And again, it goes along with the game. The game will tell the system when to activate your servo. So very cool stuff. That is a shout out to LED Blinky to make that work. Yes, wiring is wiring for these cabinets. Uh, there's a lot of wiring, especially with the LED Blinky. But now I'm going to pull you back because as you can see, we launched Super Street Fighter. And again, only the six buttons are lit up. Player three, player four are not lit up. Real quick, we're going to touch base on the light guns. These are Jolt gun for IRs modded by Ray over at RPEG Electronics. If you see my past videos, you'll see the Jolt light guns. The biggest thing is the sliding recoil on this. I'm gonna make another video talking about aim tracks versus this versus the Gun Con 2 that also Raymond offers. And I'll give you my personal opinions. This build specifically, he's seen my Rambo cabinet, he's seen my Time Crisis cabinet. He goes, Vic, I need those light guns. So what's very great and unique with these guns here you do need a USB connection and you also need power for the actual slider to be active. I'm going to bring you down to show you the very unique kind of wall mounted, flush mounted power adapter. All right, so as you can see right here, you have two flush mount USB extenders. These are going right into the PC and you have two female barrel flush mounted connectors for the power. Yes, there are two of them because you have two light guns. Each of them needs their own power brick. So as you can see, whenever he's ready to game with the actual light guns, you come right on in here, you plug in player one on either one. Usually I do prefer the top one, if you can get it in the right way, there we go. And the power connection, there. That is it, you are connected. And now that we are connected, again, light gun is in. I'm able to navigate with my arcade sticks. I'm gonna go into the gun game wheel. I have a dedicated wheel just for the light guns right there. I'm gonna launch a MAME arcade game just for video purposes to make it very quick. I'm actually gonna most likely launch Time Crisis. Uh, what's great with this light gun here is that it does have the pedal add-on. It is an actual pedal, I'll break it out. If you don't get the Jolt light gun, uh, Gun for IR, uh, Raymond RP Electronics offers a USB um, foot pedal, so that's pretty cool. I'm very picky, I always keep my lenses covered. He does give you a cover to it. Main arcade games, all the inputs are mapped to the actual gun. So right now, if I press the left side here, it'll insert coin. And when I pull the trigger, it'll start. So I have to make sure I have to insert enough coins. This game specifically just starts on its own. And as you can hear, that is the Jolt light gun. That is what you are paying for, that real sliding recoil. 
You don't need the pedal. You could use the button that's on the actual gun. But again, I'm getting a lot of questions. I've, I've been always getting questions ever since I did the time crisis video based on these don't like guns. And they are expensive, but that is what you are paying for. You're paying for that slider right there. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, it's also really cool with this specific kind of build, and I will do it for all my future builds. Customer wanted a pause feature on it, and you can pause the game. So this is pausing MAME Arcade. I want to get the foot pedal, so I pause. I'm going to come right on over here and grab my foot pedal. Foot pedal is very unique. This comes with the jolt. That super jolt box I just showed off, it comes with it. Uh, basically, it's like a telephone wire that comes, I don't know the technical part of it. But you put the pedal on the floor, you connect the telephone port into the gun, and you are set now. So now if I hit this, I am able to stand. I'm not pushing, I'm showing you the gun because I'm not pushing the button. But basically now, I am good to go. Awesome. Like I said, not all the guns utilize the pedal, but a game like Time Crisis, you know Time Crisis based on that foot pedal alone. Awesome stuff, the pedal is great. Now real quick, I do want to touch up on our Peg Electronics and the gun for IR in this video real quick. It's a beautiful system. The gun for IR, there are four sensors on the screen. Big thing that I do want to point out is that the accuracy on it, not to mention how close I am. Keep in mind, this is a 55 inch screen, okay? If I get too close, I lose it. Because obviously I lost, I'm not in the position of the sensors. But if I bring it back, look at that. I'm, I'm no joke right now, probably like three feet away. Now, I get it, some people might not have the room. But I did mention to Ray, like, you know, not many people will play a light gun like this. Me personally, I have the, I got I to gotta extend my arm out. He does offer you a lot of slack on this wire. I'm gonna go right now a good six feet. I would go more if I could. You can see the wire there. That's what's great about the flush mounted USB connection. But I'm right now over here. And yes, I mean, either way, three feet, six feet, seven feet away, the accuracy on this gun is amazing. Again, I'm gonna be talking about that when I get to the aim tracks. I actually didn't think it was, I hope I'm in frame. <laughs> but yes. Gun for IR is, is where it's at. And once I'm done playing, I could exit out, you could unplug the light guns, and you could continue to game on. That's it. So real quick, I'm going to touch base on the 8 bit o controls. Again, this is unique to this build here. Normally, I do suggest the 4 Xbox One controls, which he does have in this build, but he added on a couple of extra stuff. So what's really cool with these, it is a wireless controller, so they do have to be charged. That is also another reason why he has the extra two USB ports up top here. Controllers come with the cords and all that. You can basically plug it in and charge it. Um, my big thing right now, we're going to launch a NES game. And I'm going to just show you real quick how this works. Uh, and again, in the full in-depth video, I'm going to explain a lot about these controllers. So right now, before I play my game, I'm a big fan of using these, these kind of ports there. This right here, I connected it, but you do have to turn the controller on just by pressing the start button and it'll turn on. Awesome. Now, I'm still utilizing the arcade sticks to select a game. I'm a big Mario fan, you know me. So let's play some Super Mario 3 real quick. I post that a lot in like my videos, but I'm just a Mario fan. I mean, you can't go wrong with Mario. So, so we're gonna run Super Mario 3. We're gonna launch it. Again, I do have the audio low on this. And again, using now the 8-bit controller. See? Select. I'm going to select. I'm able to navigate my character once I'm ready. Awesome. Cool. That's it. Sweet. So he did give me a list of specific systems that he wanted this controller to work with, along with the Super Nintendo and the um, Sega Genesis controller. So as you can see, awesome, beautiful stuff. A lot of testing and a lot of configuring. Real quick now, you might have heard it. LED Blinky did activate, thinking that the arcade sticks could be used, but they cannot be used. You can't use them. I'm going to go full in-depth on that. But, and honestly, that's pretty much it. I'm able to game with these controllers. Again, some people, they don't like to use. Like me personally, I would never play this game using arcade sticks. In my personal opinion, I have, in my personal situation with my cabinets, 
I use the Xbox controllers, but for this customer here, he actually has NES style controllers for the NES. Very cool, awesome stuff. I could exit out, and once I exit out, the front end will come back to life and I will be able to navigate. Again, there's a lot of programming that goes involved with this. Also keep in mind, this is a PC. He could exit out of Hyperspin. You could run your Steam games. You want to do work, I don't know, you want to do Excel, you want to run Gmail on it. You could do that. That is what's great about these PC-based systems. This right here plays everything. I put the new Marvel Spider-Man on it. I have God of War on it. Again, these are PC titles that I'm, I'm hitting with you. Mortal Kombat 11, Street Fighter 5. This plays it. Not to mention those fighting games that I just mentioned. They work with the arcade sticks. You don't need Xbox controllers. They do work with the arcade sticks. Again, now I'm talking about the PC side of it. I do have PC arcade style game wheel. I have PC racing wheel. And I do have your basic PC games. PC, arcade, and multiplayer are basically games that, multiplayers, not all of them will work on arcade sticks, but a good, I would say 80% of them do work on arcade sticks. I have a separate wheel for just strictly like PC games that need Xbox controllers. So for example, the brand new Marvel Spider-Man Remastered came out for the PC. I have that in this wheel. If I go back and I launch into the PC racing wheel, most popular one is Forza 5, Forza 4. Hot Wheels, this plays it. That is the big advantage of a PC-based system. So now real quick, because like I said, this video is going to be going out to potential customers. I do want to show off the Guitar Hero stuff. So I do have my personal Guitar Hero guitar in my hand. I do run Dolphin Emulation. So this is a actual Wii guitar using a Raphnet cord. The big thing is that you do want to make sure that your controller is plugged in before launching. Just like I did with the NES game that you just saw, you have to do the same thing for a majority of these, especially with those external controllers. So right now, let's do one basic one. We'll do World Tour. Again, as you can see, I'm able to navigate still with the arcade controls. There's a lot of program that gets involved with this. And my game launched. Raphnet comes with a six foot cord, so I don't have to be right up against the machine. I don't know where I put the camera really, but I'm gonna be able to play this game using my Guitar Hero Wii guitar. And as you can see, I could skip the screen, I could strum along. Obviously, I can't play the audio or else I'll get hit with copyright. But just to show you off and just to show, you know, it works. Stuff works. As you can see, I'm able to go up and down. Uh, I don't really care about this. <laughs> We just gotta create a save name and awesome. Again, these, this right here is an actual Wii game. It's a Wii emulation. So you do get that like, hey, you gotta put your name in. It's gonna look for like downloadable content and such. This again is an add-on. I'm doing this to show off add-ons. As you can see, strumming along. I'm able to play some. We'll do Living on a Prayer. That's cool. Obviously you won't hear it, um, but yes, uh, let's... Uh, Continue that and awesome. Again, just showing up a lot of add ons. This specific build right here, this has the works, especially with the active marquee, the LED blinky, the servos, the guitars, the DJ hero stuff. It is awesome. I do want to play this real quick just so you can visually see it working, and then we're going to call it on this overview real quick. And as you can see, all five buttons work. Obviously, you won't hear the music but at least you will see me rock out real quick. And emulation is great. Again, it's all based on the PC specs. That is the big thing. So real quick, that's why there's no notes yet. It's the intro. A lot of it is revolved around PC specs. This is why I personally use amazing spec PCs. I don't go cheap on stuff. If you are on a budget, I will be able to use a, P a cheaper PC, such as a Dell Optiplex, but you are sacrificing stuff when you do that. So just keep in mind, and as you can see, I'm able to rock out, even the whammy bar works, all that. Guitar Hero, it works, it's awesome. I'm able to exit the system, it brings me back into the front end, and I have control. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Project Canada. This is, to date, this is the top of the top of the top. I have never done a build with all of these add-ons. This right here, to date, I don't know about the future, I'm hoping the future will add more stuff, but 
to date. This right now is the ultimate arcade I have ever built. Stay tuned, like I said, I do have, I do plan to do full in-depth. I do talk a lot, like this video, it's probably supposed to be a five minute video, probably 10 to 10 minutes. But again, I have a lot of videos planned for this specific build before it goes out. Yes, it is going to Canada. It will be crated, I'm gonna have to crate, uh, pallet it. And yes, I do ship. And as you can see, it is global. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next one again. Stay tuned. I have a lot of news planned for this one. I'm going to stop talking because I just keep talking. <laughs> Thanks, guys.